Live from the Tokyo Studios. Saturday, October the 21st, 2021. Brings you the news, all from China. With your host, James Cooper. Here's the news. Science shows Chinese dams are devastating the Mekong River. A poll who has been the best US president in the 21st century. Of course, the weather. A ship sinks in the Yangtze Delta. My God. Hey, how are you doing? It looks so professional, professional at the beginning, and I spoiled it <laughs> by not really realizing the camera it was on. Let's hop into it. Science shows Chinese dams are devastating the Mekong. The Mekong River runs from Tibet and it goes through Burma or Myanmar, then Laos, Thailand or Thailand, Laos, Cambodia, Vietnam, then the Mekong Delta, uh, Delta out to the South China Sea. But let's have a read of what's happening with the Mekong inside the Chinese borders. Eleven massive dams straddle the mighty Mekong River before it leaves China and flows to Myanmar, Laos, Thailand, Cambodia and on to Vietnam. Yet, it's been sceptical that China could use 11 upstream dams, massive as they are, to turn off the tap for the country downstream. Too many people's livelihoods, including 20% of the world's freshwater fish catch, are dependent on the monsoonal ebb whatever that is, and flow of the Mekong. Yes, dams store water for a time, but eventually the water must flow downstream through generators, spinning turbines, or open floodgates, holding on to that water for leverage seems like a diplomatic blunder. Now, I live in Cambodia, and I've been based here really for about uh, six years really bad no i don't speak much of the language and i've never had any problems really with water even though there have been some really hot seasons and yep droughts do come but never been really effect affected have been warnings but this could all change and it's just something where china flexes its muscle this is my muscle here Nice. Now, a little bit later on, we will get to the free gorges, but there's nothing mega going on about it. But we are concentrating a bit on dams for today. And a little bit later on, towards the end of the show, there is a poll. And I have checked it at the time of recording, which is about lunchtime on the 23rd of October, and see how it's going. Quite interesting as it goes. But let's continue. Now, you may remember earlier this year that uh, two sizably big dams did collapse in China. They were relatively old. I think anything over two years old in China is old because of the quality is not the best in the world. And this was in Henan province and also in Inner Mongolia or South Mongolia. But... The PLA, the Chinese Army, the People's Liberation Army, did have this to say about it. The Chinese Army this week warned that a dam in rain-drenched Henan province, the centre of the country, could collapse at any time, following damage caused by what local media described as the once-in-a-thousand-year once weather event. And here you can see that it's partially collapsed with a 20-metre crack, hence the name of the title. 
This all happened in July and some media reported a 20 meter crack appeared in this dam in Sichuan, sorry, in Yuqian County. Again, this in Henan province on the 21st of July 2021. According to reports from the local water department, a height of about two meters, a concrete overflow of the barrier across the river and the level of irrigation went up. These reports always seem to come out a little bit later. July is like three months ago, when it should have really been reported immediately afterwards. But again, um, China lets things cool down, or the government lets things cool down, and then they report it. And if they reported it, you could say when it happened, the mainstream media would have grabbed onto it a lot. And uh, then they would have make sure the dam was that collapsed was the actual foreigners' fault and not the Chinese fault. It's just construction. That's, it just seems to be shoddy. Now, it was a once in a thousand year flood, but could you say that about the Free Gorges Dam? Would it be able to hold that? We don't know. It's just a year by year case scenario. Okay, let's have a look at the weather. Now, this is a different weather map. I'm just expanded it out to the whole of China, basically. The hand is approximately, very approximately, by the Free Gorges Dam. And you can see some of the weather in Southeast Asia, some rain bits and some rain coming into around the North China Sea, the Yellow Sea, and all quite quiet. Also, the snow we have as well, doing this as a report, and you can see that here. Related to the Free Gorges Dam, you can see the levels here, and it's 173. It hasn't really moved for the Free Gorges. The uh, Catan is at 174. That hasn't moved. The webcam is back once again. They've twiddled bits and pieces and twiddled some knobs, etc. And you can see just a sample picture that the floodgates aren't open and possibly producing as much electricity as possible. And moving on to the headline of what we had here, it was reported that a ship near enough on the Yangtze Delta, very close to it, in the very close to Hangzhou, which is very close to Shanghai, that a 96 meter long vessel cargo ship on New Year's Eve, this is way back at the beginning of the year, carrying 47,000 tons of cement on the way from Wuhu to Shaman basically didn't do very well. It first sent out a distress single on December the 30th in Hanzhou Bay, just south of Shanghai, uh, according to some assistant. And then you can read the rest here. Why is this, why am I reporting this like 10 months before, or 10 months after the actual event is, again, we only seem to find these reports when you really dig deep. Now, if this happened, you could say in the Suez Canal or the Amazon or in America or in the English Channel, for example, it would be ported there and then. Again, it's just the secrecy that is there, which is how can a country be international and work with other countries if you're not transparent and not giving us the information? Old news, but it's been reported here. And... If you get my drift, the world needs to come together. China needs to come together with other countries. There's always going to be disagreements on certain things, but in general, we should get together. Internationally, it's been proven that self-sufficient countries don't work. Russia before China, many people lose their lives because of, I don't really want to say the word of starvation, but I will. And China needs America for imports, for everything, for technology. Uh, Russia needs America. Uh, I could put it the other way around, that 
America needs the UK and needs Europe. So it's a whole group together. A single out big country makes a dent in the whole circulation of it all. Now, just out of interest and nothing related to China, I did actually put a poll out. And as I did it this afternoon, I checked it this afternoon, um, it was about who has been the best or who was or who is the best president of America in the 21st century. Was it Bush? Was it Obama? Was it Trump? When I left it last, it was like 4% was Obama and 96% was Trump. I'll leave the poll up for a couple of days. You can just go to the community on my homepage and you can cast your vote. It doesn't matter where you're from. It's just something that I'm quite interested to see. And in three or four days' time, sometime next week, we will publish the results. So please do. doesn't matter of your actual nationality. But please only vote once. And with this poll, all votes are counted. There's no secrecy there. And I only have one comment today, and it's from, oh, I can't even read the name. I think you can make a whole new channel, The Life of Tokyo. It's the favorite part of my show. Well, I do actually have some videos on Tokyo, even when he was like two weeks old, near enough. You just go to my homepage, go to playlist, and there should be a bunch of videos there related to Tokyo, and I hope you enjoy it. The last one I did would be on yesterday's show, and there were only like 30 seconds, and or oh, even today's show about my lovely brand new house. Tokyo the Cats, the king of the house. And really, that is about it for today. As always, thank you so much for your time. I should be back tomorrow with another show, newsroom show. <laughs> if you don't like the newsroom music, don't worry, I'm not going to do it every time. It was just something I was inspired and have done before. And I do remember one person saying he didn't like the music. It's just a little bit of fun to make the world possibly a little bit of a better place just for 10 minutes of your time where you could smile and also hear about the news and my <laughs> opinion sometimes, not of the country of China, but the how awful you could say the government of China is. And I wish they would sort of like start communicating with the West of the world and move forward. That's it. Thank you very much. My name is James, Saturday the 23rd of October 2021. Bye-bye for now.